So something that I encounter on a regular basis, which seems I, I start every video this way now, but something that I encounter on a regular basis is um, I throughout being a youth pastor, youth intern, worship leader, uh, just being involved in various kinds of music, preaching, teaching, uh, just the things that I do, um, it puts me in a sphere where I, I tend to encounter people saying, I wish I had the boldness that you have to get up on a stage and play music, get up on a stage and, and speak, or to be able to share my faith with someone else, or uh, just any of those things. I wish I had the boldness to, and people would ask, pray to God that he'll give me the boldness to do it. And it kind of constitutes a fundamental misunderstanding of the truth of what it means to preach and where that comes from. The simple fact is, the reason why I have their definition of boldness to speak, to do music, to do all those things, is simply, I've done it a long time. Um, I'm... Ray Comfort, I'm sure, as well as people like Jeff Durbin and uh, Todd Friel, some of these, as well as the ones that just, they're like, uh, they're just kind of out there that they do radio shows and different things. They'll even tell you that, you know what, it's terrifying to get up in front of people, to put yourself out there and experience that risk of rejection, that risk of confrontation in order for you to be able to share the message of faith with someone else, or just a message in general. It's, it's a scary thing. Um, public, uh, or kind of public speaking is supposedly the number one most common fear reported uh, among people. Uh, I don't know who's testing for that, but that's kind of the, the myth or the adage that kind of floats around. The thing is, you will never have boldness until you just do it. In the same, like, the reason why people that are able to perform at elite levels in athletics or in um, music or any of these things is not because they have a boldness to do it. It's really that they've practiced and that they've rehearsed. They've gotten to the point where they can't do it wrong. All the things that they want to say, the things they want to do, it's just in their mind and they have a, a natural ability to just pull it up because they've, they've practiced. So, um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, you don't need to pray to God for boldness. What you need is to pray for God to make you obedient see there are instances when literally like it'll just turn your stomach um, very like where like it, because you know that the situation you're about to go into to share and speak into is going to be confrontational maybe even life-threatening and that's when you need to have the Holy Spirit come through and give you that kind of adrenaline shot of boldness past what you know into just just doing it. However, most of our interactions, especially here in Western society, most of our interactions are not going to be that severe. We're more afraid of interpersonal rejection than we are actually afraid of um, like a life-threatening circumstance. And it's easy to get like newsletters and things from Voice of the Martyrs or other organizations like that and be like, man, I wish I could be that way. With this, anybody that I know of that has ever said that, the simple truth is they don't wish that they could be like that because if you're not willing to risk social rejection now, you're not going to be willing to risk life-threatening rejection in another context. It's a it's a pipe dream. So you just need to take a small step today. Like the first thing that you can do is like follow Living Waters, Wretched 
Twitch.tv or Apologia Studios, some of these organizations that have their content on the internet and just watch the interactions, listen to the way that they speak to one another, the inner and just just observe for a time. You can do that. But eventually you have to start practicing. Watching people carry the ball on Saturday morning or Sunday morning is never going to make you a Hall of Fame running back. Eventually you have to lace up your own cleats. You have to get out on the field and you have to actually carry that ball. Otherwise you're not you're not really a participant. And if you're not really a participant, are you really a member of the team? So let me challenge you that way. Look for look for those opportunities as well where a conversation can naturally just kind of flow into a spiritual conversation and accept the fact that you will fail. You will say the wrong thing. People will get upset with you. Um, you may even lose friends over this kind of thing, but the question is your values. What is worth most? The few friends you have right now that you probably won't know in five years or an eternity in heaven. So, make your choice.